Okay, that should be running. And then we're gonna share. All right, so this is lesson five. We're almost a third of the way through the course now. The first program this week, uh, what we're covering is uh, mathematical functions, characters, and strings. Now again, anytime we talk about functions, we have objects that can do stuff, okay? Um, for example, we have an object called a character and we can check whether or not a character is uppercase, lowercase, if it's a letter, if it's a digit, things like that. Those are all introduced in this chapter and how to manipulate things like strings, uh, how to use the math functions. Like I've told you before, uh, some of you are already using math uh, random. Uh, I don't use it, but you can. Uh, what else is in there? Oh, uh, math.pow, P-O-W, is to raise to the power of because Java doesn't have a built-in uh, exponent function in it uh, without loading the math, uh, math function, okay? Um, a lot of times, like if I do pi r squared, pi times radius squared, I'll just put radius times radius. But if I'm going to multiply something by more than two or the second power, I'm going to use the math pow uh, exponent function because who wants to put if it's like raised two to the 10th power and two is saved at something like number. I'd have to have number times number times number times number. 10 times. Well, that's going to look ridiculous. Okay. Not that it wouldn't work, but it, it would work. So they're going to introduce that stuff to you. Um, so when you're checking the SSN, first thing you're going to do is what? Anybody know? What would be the first thing you want to do when you're going to check an SSN? Check what's under the strong. Yeah, to check the length of the string. It's the first thing you want to do because you'll know right away. And again, length is a, uh, can tell how long the variable is, okay? If it is an 11, you know right away it can't be a valid SSN. So it has to be 11, okay? Then the first three characters have to be what? Numbers. Numbers, digits, yeah. So we can check for that. Then we have a dash, we can check for that. Then we got two more digits, we can check for them. We have another dash, and then we have four more digits. So you're gonna have um, a bunch of if statements because at this point you can't use a loop. So you'll at least have, I believe, 11 or 12 if statements to validate whether or not your SSN is, uh, um, valid or not. In the three city sort, um, Java sorts by ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And that's great, but, I'll show you something here if I can find. I thought I saved it. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, no, a lot earlier. Oh man, I didn't save it. Okay, well, you'll get the whole thing then. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do to you when I grade your program. You have to come, okay, I'm gonna type in three cities and these I'm gonna show you the ones I use. I type that. In for the first city, I type that for the second city, and I type this for the third city. And if I sort those right now, I will get uh, ATL, CHI, and BOS. Okay, anybody think that's right? It is right. But, but it's sorting as ASCII. The problem with ASCII is that the, um, the letters are case sensitive. 
So a capital letter A is equal to the binary number, let's see, 164, 032, 016, 08, 04, 02, is equal to that, okay, in binary. or decimal, it's 65. So in binary, the reason we represent it is that, is that this circuit is open, the 64. These circuits are closed and this circuit is open, okay? So A is 65, okay? So my C would be uh, 67, okay? So that would be a C, capital C, be a one, zero, 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 one, zero. Okay. And so that would be 67. But the letter B, when they designed this, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So you would think they'd take the capital letter A, add 26 onto it to get the small letter A, right? No, they didn't do that. What they did is they just turned on the 32 bit. So a small letter A is equal to 97, okay? Or one, one, Zero, 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 0001 is a small letter A or 97. So the B, a small letter B would be equal to 98. So it'd be one, one, that's uh, 96. So zero, 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 one, zero. And again, that's why we use the binary system. It's so easy to do when we're talking about circuits being opened and closed. So now when I sort these, this is why I get these because the A is only 65. The C is 67, but that small letter B is all the way up at 98. Okay. So in your programs, you need to find a way to not take into consideration the case structure. Okay. Because we want it to sort the way it should sort the way we want it to sort would be ATL, right? And then BOS and then Chicago. That's what your program has to sort as, not this. Okay. But the reason behind it is down here is because we sort by ASCII. Well, guess what? In this, um, why didn't it go away there? In this chapter, when you read this, you'll find that there is a function called ignore case when you're sorting. Okay. So that's what you need to use for that. Today, we're gonna to write this financial application. Uh, the one in the book is on 4.23. Mine is a lot more extensive, and that's why we're gonna do it in class here. So I'm gonna go over and create a new project. And why is it open project? No, I clicked the wrong one. File, new project, there we go. And it's ant. And I'll just call it P 
payroll calculator, no space. There we go. And this is project the Acme payroll calculator. This will be payroll calculator dot Java. The date today is 9-15-2020. The author is me or you or, and the purpose, a program to calculate the net pay of a worker given their hours worked and rate of pay. Let's see, hours worked, rate of pay, and deductions. And then we'll come over here and we'll say deductions. Are you going to let me move that over or not tab it over? Okay, so we'll have that. And we'll say FICA is equal to 0 0.07, I think it was 85 or is it 65? Oh, come on. So my FICA is 7.65, 2 and 18. Okay. 7.65. Federal tax is equal to 18%. State tax will make it 2%. And a standard work week will make it 40 hours. And overtime factor will be equal to 1.5. And then I'm going to clean this up again. If you're not doing this, you should be because you need to learn how to indent correctly because if you go on in programming, some programs use indentation for the end of functions and beginning of a new function, for example. So if you don't do it right, oh, what I have here, I got mine goofed up already. Okay, get rid of all the Java docs. Later on, if you want to learn Java docs, there's stuff where you can, places you can go to do that. It's just self-documentation is what it is. It'll, if you type certain things in, it will create a annotation for you automatically and you don't have to go back and create a document explaining your program. Okay, it says that we're going to get the hours worked and rate of pay from someplace. So we know right then that um, we're going to have to get it from the user, in this case, Java Utility Scanner. And there it locks up, always does. I don't know why that happens. And then I'll put some weird stuff in there when it stops. Yeah, I know that, okay. Yeah, 
See that? That's goofy. Don't know why it does that. All right, so I've got a scanner up there. So now I have to get a scanner here. Because again, that's just like the blueprint for my scanner. I need to create the scanner now. So the scanner, and I'll just call it user input and equal to a new scanner. All this stuff you guys should, by this point, should be familiar with. Um, you shouldn't have to look it up or, okay, how do I get information from the user? Uh, you should know that by now. All right, so I get to here, and again, I've planned this all out. And again, this is what you should have done if I would have shown you this earlier, what you should be doing, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create all my constants, okay? So I start a con, so these are my inputs. Because we're gonna start dividing stuff up here in a couple of weeks into inputs, processing, and outputs at a minimum. So the first one is I need final and I'll call it uh, FICA tax, maybe. Or just, well, let's see, what did I do yesterday? Da, da, da. We can just call it FICA. Is uh, now nah, make it FICA tax. I'll show you why. 0765. Oops, I forgot to make it a double, Doug. And then I'll have a final double for Fed tax. This is why I'm, I put that tax under FICA too. So these would match. Uh, what I do there? Final double. Oh, forget the semicolon. And so I've got FICA tax, state tax. So now I'm going to have a final uh, double. Again, the hours were or standard hours will be 40 in this case. If I worked in a company where their standard hours were. Um, I can make that an int. Um, 35 hours, then I would make this, I just changed this part right here to uh, 35. Okay, so that's that, that, and that, and that. Then I start needing certain variables. So one variable I need is the number of hours worked. Is that gonna be a double or an integer? Uh, an integer. So if you work uh, 35 and a half hours, you're gonna donate that to the company, the, five, the half an hour? Does it add up? No, you just lose it because you made it an integer. What should it be? A uh, double. Double. Yep. Oh, hours worked. And we can, it's going to yell at us that it doesn't need that initialize, maybe. And then, so we got double hours worked. And what's the other thing we need to get? Overtime we have their hours work. What is it? Overtime hours? No. What are the two things that can be input? 
Only two things can be input into this program. Fair wage? Yeah, yeah wage. rate of pay. All right. So then, once I know those two things, I can calculate their um, regular hours. I can um, calculate their OT hours, overtime hours. I can calculate uh, their uh, regular pay. I can calculate their overtime pay. I can create their gross pay. Okay, so now I got their gross pay. Now I need what is their FICA tax. Notice it's spelled different than the other one up above. I can calculate their federal tax. I can create their state tax. I can get their total deductions. And then that leaves me with their net pay. Okay. So those are all of my inputs. Okay. That's all of the things I need. Well, I haven't created the input yet. I'm sorry. But that's all of my, maybe input shouldn't be there. Maybe it should be down here. Control X that. Because those are just me declaring what I need. So I think I'll put inputs down here. Oh, come on. All right, so my first thing I'm gonna have down here is uh, print line. Hang on one second. Um, yeah, somebody calling me. Just a little thing there to introduce to the person. What is this thing I'm doing? And then we'll have Oh, I know one other one. I'm sorry. We need to go right up here above this one. I'm just going to put this in. I didn't do it yesterday, but uh, string name. Do that. Oh, and I'll do this too as long as we're here. There we go.
do something like that. We're a small company, so first name and then name will be equal to uh, Okay, so we got their name. And after this one, we're going to check and see if, in fact, it's working. Again, there's no reason to keep going if something is not working. No reason to keep going if, and it's a lot easier to find your air um, while you don't have a bunch of code and as you go along. So at this point we check, all we do is put it and we just print it out. If it's getting it and it's not crashing, a name plus space there plus uh, ch -ch -ch. that's the next one hours worked plus space plus rate of pay So now we can run it, see what it looks like. All right, so I just put in Doug, enter the number of hours worked, I'll say 50, and entered employees rate of pay, I'll say 10, and it says Doug 5010, so that means it's getting it, and it's not airing out at all. So I know up to this point right here, I'm good. Everything's working correctly. And that's all of my inputs. So then anything after this is processing. Because everything else um, we need is, uh, is an equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the number of hours. So I'm going to say if um, hours worked is greater than um, standard hours, then I need to do something. Okay. So then reg hours will be equal to standard hours. And OT hours will be equal to um, hours worked, let's see, hours worked minus standard hours. Else, um, regular hours will be equal to or assigned hours worked. And we're going to check this equation.
make sure it's working because it's critical. I'm going to run it twice. So, Doug, hours work, we'll put 50. And the rate of pay 10, it doesn't matter at this point. So you can see here we got 40 hours of regular and 10 hours of overtime. So now let's run it again and just put in Doug. And it was a short week, so I only worked 22 hours. And you can see I worked 22 hours, regular pay, or regular hours, and no overtime hours. So that works good too. So now I've checked up to that point, so I don't need that. Okay. So now my regular pay should be equal to my reg hours times rate of pay. And my overtime pay should be equal to my overtime hours times my rate of pay times my OT factor. So there's that, okay? All right, give me a second. I need to take a short break. I'll be right back. You guys can look at this and catch up while we're Okay, I'm back. So again. So that last thing we typed in, that doesn't have to be in, in, under one of the if or else statements? No, it shouldn't be. Okay. It should not be. Again, notice your indentation here. That goes with that. That one goes with that one. Okay. So that'll be uh, performed after it does the if and else, like yep. in sequential order? Okay. Yep. Because this same thing happens for both of them. So you don't want to put it inside there. We want to calculate those for both of them. So I don't put it up there. So let's see if we in fact get, I happen to know that the pay for 50 hours at $10 an hour should come to, oh, well, let's put in the last statement here. So my gross pay should be equal to my regular pay plus my OT pay. And then we'll print this out, Simpson out, print line. And then we'll put reg pay plus 
plus OT pay plus plus gross pay. And we'll see if it comes out right. All right. Remember how's it work? We're gonna put fifty and ten dollars. And you can see here, forty hours at ten dollars an hour would be four hundred. That would leave me ten hours of overtime at time and a half. So that would give me 15 hours times 10 or 150 for a total of $550. So that seems to be working. Let's run it once. Is there anything in there? 22 hours at $10 an hour. You can see here I get $220, no overtime pay for a total gross pay at $220. So this seems to be working. So then I can get rid of that. And I know every. I know right now that everything works up to that point. Okay. All of my taxes are based on my gross pay. So the first one is FICA tax is equal to my gross pay times my FICA tax. My federal tax is equal to my gross pay times my Fed tax. Oops. My state tax is equal to my gross pay times my state tax. And my total deductions then are equal to my FICA tax plus my Fed tax plus my state tax. Okay. And then that also means that my net pay is equal to uh, my gross pay minus my total deductions. So I could uh, do Oops. And in this case, I don't really know what they are off the top of my head, but I can estimate if they're realistic or not, and am I getting an amount? So I can run that. So you can see here, what do I got going? So this is my FICA, my federal, my state added together, subtracted from uh, 550 and you could add those together and you can see 
that in fact they would add up to 550. So that looks pretty good. So I got to there, I'm getting output. I can get rid of that. So now I have my processing done. So now I can do my output. So I'm gonna use a print format. So it's print F. And I'm gonna have the line feed. And then I'm gonna have something like this. And it's gonna be a space there and then a percent sign, then the letter S. that I'd like to put a apostrophe s there wonder if I can do that let's see if I can apostrophe s we'll see if that works later on and I'm going to go right there and hit enter oops what happened right there and hit enter, there we go. And then it will be uh, slash T hours worked. And then it'll be a percent sign uh, 0.2F slash N. And then it'll be a slash T and rate of pay. And it'll be a dollar sign, percent sign, 0.2F slash N. And then it'll be slash T. And then it'll be reg. So we can make it regular hours. Okay, we'll be um, percent sign point two F slash N. We can do that, and then we can put slash T O T hours. Or do we want to make it overtime? Oh, that looks okay. And that'll be a percent sign, 0.2F slash N. So these, what you're seeing here is this S up here is a holding place for a string. This one right here, this percent dot 2F, that's a holding space for a floating point number that will have two decimal places, okay? This one's money, I put a dollar sign in front of it, that's all. The slash T means a tab, the slash N means give me a new line. Hours. So then I got regular, or the, the pay. What about the slash? Um on the very top one after the I'm edit. trying to escape that. I don't know if I'm gonna leave that there or not. I don't want it to read that as a special character. I want it to be an apostrophe S. So we're gonna see if that in fact works. If not, I'll have to reconfigure that. So my regular pay is gonna be dollar sign space, so let's see. Space dollar sign percent sign point two F slash N. N and then slash T and then overtime pay. Will be dollar sign percent sign 
0.2 fn. These have to be exact, by the way, over time pay. So then I'm going to get um, slash t. And this will be my gross pay. It'll be dollar sign percent sign point two F slash N. Then I'm just going to do slash T. Let's see what that looks like. And then slash N. Okay, so we got that. And then we're going to have uh, do, 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 slash slash T will be FICA X. It'll be a dollar sign, percent sign, 0.2F slash N. Then we'll have slash T, federal tax. And that'll be a dollar sign, percent sign, dot two F slash N. Then we'll have slash T, state tax, dollar sign, percent sign, point two F slash N. And then we'll have slash T and it'll be total deductions. Dollar sign, percent sign, point two F. I think it helps to, to say what you're typing because then if it doesn't sound right in your head, um, you know you typed it wrong. That's right, right there, slash n, and then slash t, that, 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 that. This will be net a. Dollar sign. Percent sign dot two f slash n. Okay. So that's the format. And again, I could put these, I could put these in one on a line. I could have said system out, print that, system out, print this, system out, print this, just like we've always done. This is a little more professional looking. And now I need all the arguments that are gonna go in here in order. So the first argument is name, is gonna fill that S at the top. The second one is gonna be hours worked in the second one. And then the next one will be rate of pay is gonna fill the next one. Then uh, regular hours will fill the next one. OT hours will fill the next one. Then reg pay for the next one. And OT pay and then gross pay. And then FICA tax, federal tax, state tax, total deductions, and net pay. I think that's right. We'll see here in a second. Would you have to put a comma after gross pay? Or can yep, you... you do. Thank you. You're welcome. There we go. So you see, I don't have any red stuff right now. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. 
and my name is Doug, and I worked 50 hours at $10 an hour. And you can see our little thing trick worked here. It says Doug's payroll check. Uh-oh, I'm missing a slash N there. Hours worked is right, rate of pay is right. Not regular hours, is that it? 550 is right. There's $152 in induction. And I'm off by a penny. Okay. And that has to do with rounding of my, I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. Um, but it's caused by our percentage, multiplying money times a percentage. And later in the semester, I'll show you how to fix that. But for right now, I think that's okay. Uh, let's do this one here. So next week after that, I only work 22 hours at $10 an hour. And you can see there that I got 60, 83 here. And this time it does add up correctly. So I need to fix this right here is the only thing I need to fix because I'm missing a slash N here. And then I'm gonna finish this out by doing this. Slash N, I want an extra space at the end here. Slash N. And again, thank you for using Acme products. Something like that. And then something nice for the programmer. And I would zip that up and put it in to be graded. Again, it looks pretty good. Now that it's fixed, it should all line up too. There you go. Looks pretty professional, really. Okay, so who wrote it that theirs doesn't, see all these warnings? It says that assigned zero never is used. That's fine with me. Don't worry about that. At least you initialized it. Okay, so anybody got one that doesn't work? Everybody that typed this out has one that works. I yep, just made notes. Works. I didn't type mine out. Oh. At first, mine was throwing a bunch of errors, but it was just because I forgot to uh, put one of the things down at the bottom. It yeah, yeah. That, it, it said that there they needed 13, but I only had two. Right. Yeah, there's 13 of these. If you get it, if you do it my way, you're going to get 13 of them down here. But see, to get this, this, let's see what happens if I take that out of there. As a matter of fact, let's see if that goes crazy. What it looks like. If it, it might not do anything. So it it worked with the slash in there. The slash is called an escape character. And so sometimes when we want to type something, we need to put, uh, because Java sometimes takes uh, certain characters as special characters. See, like all these slash Ns and slash Ts. Okay, so if I want to type a, type a slash, 
I actually have to type slash slash. See there? It's saying I got an error because it doesn't know what to do with this right here. If I put it back in, now it works. And it prints Doug's. And again, I could have just printed it Doug's or Doug payroll check. But that's not, you know, and that's not what it should read. It should read Doug's payroll check. And to get it to do that, I had to escape this single single apostrophe there. So I put a line, a uh, backslash in front of it so it prints that versus giving me an error. Any questions about this program? Um, at the top with like all the doubles, like to equal zero, do you have to make them equal zero like that? No, but I will tell you sometimes it'll come back and tell you, wait a minute, you didn't initialize this. So I just put them in and again, it just warns you, it gives you these goofy things here that you never used it. You never used it when it was a zero. That's all it's saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I would say uh, on down, we definitely used it. <laughs> yeah, but you never used it while it was a zero. That's all it's saying. Up here, remember that by convention, not that it affects the program at all, but for general purposes, if it's a, a constant, it should be typed out in capital letters. What's this one warning me about? Oh, I don't want that. So again, when I name them, I name them with names that other programmers, when they come down here to my program, they can look at this and say, oh, these are all constants. Even here, remember the 40? I could have typed 40 in here and it'll run perfectly fine, okay? I could have typed 40 in here. But let's say I have this program and a week later, my boss comes and says, hey, we're gonna go down to 35 hours. Well, I'd have to come down here and find every place standard hours is and replace it with 35. Right now, all I need to do Type 35 and it works perfectly well, right? So just imagine if this program was 100,000 lines long, which is not uncommon. And he came and say, okay, you need to change every place that you got 40 in the 35, okay? Even if you hunt and search for them or do a find and replace, it's gonna take you a while and will you guarantee me that you found them all? Here, I would guarantee you that if I change this from 40, every place that I have standard hours typed is gonna to change to 35. If I type 35 in here and I'll bet you on it. I wouldn't take that bet if I was putting literals in down here for 100,000 um, lines of code or whatever. Okay, so that's that program. And we're done. Used every, look at 1046. You guys are on overtime now. So again, I'll see you on, what's today? Tuesday, Thursday, right? Jeez, I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore. Uh, Tori, I'll try and get your grades uh, back to normal. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Tori, you'll be start submitting, even if you wrote it before, you're going to mm -hmm. start submitting as of this week. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Uh, good day, Professor. Good day to you, sir. Well, you got a question or something? <laughs>